You are currently living in purgatory, a temporary holding space meant for the stripping, the purging of the elements of existence which dualism creates. This is a cleansing ground, purgatory. The toroidal field is the tor, the electromagnetic net, which has been projecting outwardly from the center. All of the shadow reflections we've been weaving within and without. Purgatory in Catholic lore is considered a state in which those ultimately destined for heaven must first undergo purification. But in a non-specific sense, purgatory means a condition or state of suffering or torment, especially one that is temporary. Dante's Divine Comedy is a Florentine poem from the 14th century, which not only reveals the nature of this current existence, of purgatory, but what lies beyond this torment. Although the poem comes from a Christian angle, it is occulting many truths about our situation and what awaits beyond this metatronic shadow land. The second section of the poem, Purgatorio deals with the ascent up Mount Purgatorio, a mountain with seven terraces relating to the seven deadly sins. At the summit is the earthly paradise, or Garden of Eden. We are in Purgatory right now, and the seven severs us from wholeness in order to experiment with the perils of polarity. The seven terraces of purgatory are not physical places, they are states of being that must be cleansed, and this story is revealing that in order to make it back to the Garden of Eden, away from the toroidal torment, we must purge ourselves of dualism through experience. This is what you've been doing here. You've been purging yourself of the aspects which you don't want to carry by living them out and observing the consequences. As within, so without. This holographic overlay has been a dumping ground. If we could look at Mount Purgatorio from above, we would see this, a bullseye. We already know the center of our plane is the grand zero point, the electromagnetic conductor of this holographic matrix, where heart energy, known visibly as the aurora borealis, is stationed here for our inevitable return. This area is Eden, Hyperborea, Avalon. It is the earthly paradise, the bullseye. Taurus is Latin for bull, and the Taurus field is the net that is currently projecting consciousness to these outer lands. So of course, the eye of the toroidal field is the center, the bull's eye. But this toroidal field encases heart energy away from the rings around it. The center has the aurora light captured while it broadcasts the Song of Limitation. From a bird's eye view, Mount Purgatorio shows the Garden of Eden, the earthly paradise at the center, placing itself at the magnetic north pole. Purgatory is a truncated cone with terraces exactly like the Tower of Babel. Bab, in Arabic, means door or gate, and El, 
refers to the electromagnetic field of the Earth. By collectively climbing up the terraces of Mount Purgatorio, up Jacob's Ladder, we've gotten closer and closer to the gate at the center, the electromagnetic broadcast from the Axis Mundi. In the biblical story of Babel, it's said that humanity was working together to reach the heavens. The whole world had one language and a common speech, but then humanity was given different languages and separated from this tower. This speech is not a literal tongue as the story may suggest at first glance, but is revealing to us a unity consciousness which created the different levels of perception before scattering itself into fragmentation. We tore ourselves away from the infinite, not because we were bad, not because we were kicked out, but because we chose to embark on this timeline of fragmentation. Therefore, we built the purgatorial system before scattering ourselves. This is what the story of Babel is referring to. So, we have Mount Purgatorio climbing up and up until we reach the final destination, Eden, the North Pole, the Emerald Dream of the Goddess. At the end of the Lord of the Rings movies, after all of the battles have been fought, we see a gathering of the devoted warriors on top of what looks exactly like Mount Purgatorio. This day does not belong to one man, but to all. Let us together rebuild this world, that we may share in the days of peace. After all of the pain, strife, and confusion in Middle-earth, there is finally a sense of tranquility and sovereignty. Sovereignty over the electromagnetic field. For now, they sit atop purgatory. We could say, the return to Eden means the return to a state of pure manifestation, becoming the Lords of the Rings. Round and round we've walked in purgatorio, like the hand of a clock in perpetual motion, like the cyclicality of the movement of the stars, the sun, the moon, the seasons, like the samsaric cycle of birth and death. It seems like everything here has been a loop, but it's by funneling ourselves through time which has allowed for this dualistic stream of consciousness to manifest perfectly as a guiding force of wisdom. This is like the merry-go-round. Round and round, we funnel through time, through our many incarnations, purging ourselves of everything that does not resonate with wholeness until we reach the top. And as I've described, the top is really the center. So a lot of people often talk about ascension as a process of moving upwards, that the tree of life is going to be climbed up. And up here we have Asgard, here we have Midgard, but all of these are just different dimensional frequencies within the Earth system. Earth is the heart. Earth is the heart, and so we don't want to leave the heart. We can't leave the heart. I'm informing you that Mount Maru is not literally a mountain that is going upwards where there's the lower underneath and the higher above. And it's the same thing with this diagram. We need to read between the lines. This isn't a physical diagram explaining a literal motion of going round and round until we hit the center. This is talking about a metaphysical transformation. And once this purging is over, after all, that's what purgatory is for. It's a dumping ground. Once this purging is over, we will return back to the center. And these physical 666 carbon suits will return back to their original plasma state. 
This is an inversion. The inversion is coming, folks. When the great inversion occurs, the spin of the universe will be reversed upon itself. In recent decades, there's been much talk about a pole shift being the event that sparks the end times, the end of time, the transformation of Earth. Looking at the basic model of Earth, the north polarity is the center, the south polarity being everything projected outwards. So the inversion, the pole shift, which will occur when this timeline ends, will be the north and south polarity merging. This is within and without the polar aspects of your being, demonstrated here by the above and below chakras, which merge into the heart, the north polarity. This is the inversion, when balance is finally achieved, returning to the true form, the true blueprint. The toroidal field looks just like an hourglass, because we've been stuck in time as long as the south polarity has been sustained. We've been out of the throne. And this is exactly what uh, the age of Aquarius is speaking of. It's the waters from above coming down to merge with the waters from below. And as I've stated many times, the above and below are two manifestations of the same polarity. And so Aquarius coming down is the same thing as coming up. The above and below will be merging and we will go back to the original blueprint. So everything we see as far as politics and culture and environmental destruction and all of these uh, traumas that are embedded within our psyches, all of these things, as real as they seem, they're all caricatures reflecting back to us what happens when we leave the center. Purgatory is depicted as a location of terrible suffering, but it differs greatly from hell because the souls on the mountain willingly undergo their sufferings in order to right themselves and take their place in paradise. There is an order in which beings must purge their weaknesses. It is arduous and painful work, but is required to return back to the heart space, something which hasn't been lost or defiled, only temporarily put on lockdown, removed from our perception. This is a process in which the living souls return to a condition of first innocence, of existential newness. Ultimately, this place is a divine comedy, because when all is said and done, none of this suffering will linger like a dark cloud over us it will be nothing but a distant dream. The earthly paradise in Dante's poem is like a beautiful, lush garden. It is the place where human life began, before the fall. None of the inhabitants show any sign of disease or death. The trees are beautiful, the flowers are lush, and everything smells fresh and fragrant. It is a place of eternal peace and longevity.